В США уже несколько поколений принято In the U.S., for several generations now, it has been customary to circumcise baby boys right after birth, pretty much all of them. A boy is born, gets circumcised, and then returned back to his mom. Of course, this happens only with parental consent, but usually parents always allow it. Could you tell us about the consequences behind these actions and how these consequences can be eliminated? As you surely understand, once the foreskin is surgically removed, you can't sew it back on, you can't reverse the procedure. You could call it a secularly adapted Judaic ritual. The United States in general, as a system, is an offspring of Judaism. It is just that it has taken a less orthodoxical form thanks to an intermediary, the Protestant tradition. In their day, Protestants founded this country. Protestants lean mostly on the Old Testament instead of the New Testament, which is why Judaism can be seen there with a naked eye. What concerns the symbolism of circumcision itself, it is a symbolic act of communion. Communion with the Judaic god Yahweh, who, as it is told, was not only circumcised, but also had no parts whatsoever in the special region below the waist. This also has its meaning, but I will be telling you about this at our General Theory of Magic course, when we will be discussing the Sumerians. Exactly right, not Judaism, but the Sumerians in particular. We will be discussing Judaism as well, but a bit later. But the reasons for the circumcision of the Judaic God lie in the Sumerian Akkadian myths. There is a rule that exists in all religious systems, not just the monotheistic ones, but in polytheistic ones as well, that causing certain symbolic injury to yourself, an injury akin to that of your own God, signifies a deeper connection and a sort of dedication of oneself to that particular God. As you understand, the high rate of newborn circumcision is such only in certain parts of the U.S. I emphasize this is not the norm for all states. As a procedure, it signifies an automatic initiation of a person to a certain secular version of Judaism. Such phenomena don't really exist officially, but factually it does actually exist. And yes, it is an initiation into Judaism, of course. It is a sort of a religious conversion. Once upon a time, as it is told by the biblical tales, when certain characters and kings of the Old Testament antiquity, like Saul or David, went to fight their adversaries, they used to bring back precisely the cut-off genitals of their enemies. Different Puritan books describe it in different ways. Some did insist it was just the foreskins. But think about it, is there really time on the battlefield to cut off these foreskins? It is much easier and faster to cut off the entire deal down there. Other, even more bashful authors said that it was actually the years they used to cut off. But that is, of course, not the truth. What they cut off was the entire deal below the waist. Then the warriors dumped these collected trophies in front of the king in order to show the extent of this king's valor. They used to cut off particularly the deal below the waist and not the ears or some other body parts for the very reason of paying tribute to the circumcised or more accurately to the castrated God, as an offering to him, a sort of compensation. And for themselves, they gave themselves a symbolic injury, which meant that me and my God are one and the same. I carry the seal of my God. That is why the injury was done to a very particular body part and not somewhere else. In order to tease out this symbolism, and Judaic symbolism is very ancient indeed, you, of course, must immerse yourselves into all the books of the Old Testament which there are a lot of, as well as the legends of the Sumerian Akkadian pantheon. There are fewer of them, and they are the precursor to the books of the Old Testament. You would have to compare all this, if I may call it so, literature, draw the parallels, see the connections, see all the energy informational lines that are running from the past to the present, see the intersecting myths and understand the roots, the causes, 
and sources of everything that is going on. And if you don't have time nor skills to look at mythological literature from this angle, then I welcome you to our general theory of magic course. Sooner or later, either way, we will find ourselves discussing Sumerians and Akkadians, as well as the Jews, the Christians and all other Abrahamic systems. I will be telling you about this line in very fine detail, as well as about the parallels between the ancient myths and the current writings. I will be drawing out for you very thoroughly and in very fine detail. So do have patience. Right now I can draw it out for you because this course takes overall several full four-hour long lectures. Therefore, we will leave it until it's time. But I did give you a clue. If you are interested in this subject, feel free to do your own research. And if you need not so much a recommendation, but a more truthful explanation about the circumcision itself, try to hear me and give yourself an answer to the following question. Are you ready to commit your son to the Judaic God, first of all, in infancy, second of all, irreversibly, and third, without even taking into consideration your, and most importantly, his, will and desire. Since everyone who is committed to the Judaic God automatically becomes his servant. Those who are committed to the Christian God, meaning his son, they too become unfree, because another name for baptism is spiritual circumcision. The symbolism is the same, it's just the ritual that is different.